Hey there, this is Dominic and welcome to this new course on how to create game art with Inkscape. In this course you are going to learn how to create awesome 2D graphics for your games. We will be creating characters, we'll be creating background and foreground graphics. So everything you'll need to build your platformers, RPGs or really any 2D games you want to make. The technique we'll be using is really very simple but efficient and is based on vector graphics. It does not require you any drawing skills whatsoever. But before we'll get right into it, I want to quickly point out what are vector graphics and what are the main advantages compared to regular bitmap. Vector graphics are really a mathematical description of an image. So a collection of shapes with uh, their properties like color, size or position. To sum it up, it's it's really a, a structured model that describes an image. In contrast to that, a bitmap really just plainly stores the color values of each and every pixel. So there are really two big advantages of vector graphics which are especially relevant when making game art. First, um, the editing capabilities of vector graphics due to the description due to the structural description of vector graphics um, really any object can be modified all the time so if you've added a line in the beginning which you don't like you can edit and adjust the line change its properties all the time until the end the second advantage scalability also due to the nature of the of the vector graphics file all objects in the file can be resized as much as you like so can be made infinitely small or infinitely large without any loss of quality. In the end, of course, you have to export it as a bitmap because most game engines and rendering engines um, can only deal with bitmaps. But until that point, you really don't care about uh, what resolution the image will have in the end. And you can really export it as big or as small as you want it in the end. So with that in mind, I'd really say we just get into it and start our drawing. Um, in this first episode, I really want to um, focus a little bit on Inkscape, so the program itself and how it works. But let's just start with the basics. So here we have our blank document. Uh, on the left side is our toolbar, which is not that much tools. Uh, but in fact, we only need three now in the first episode, which is the first one, the default tool, the selection tool, can be accessed by pressing F1. So really the F keys on your keyboard are important shortcuts uh, when uh, selecting tools. Then the next tool, uh, F4, which is uh, the rectangle and square tool. And then F5, which is the circle and ellipsis tool. Now with these two tools, we can create basic shapes, basic squares or basic circles. Uh, today we'll only be using these two tools and uh, already be creating our first character graphics. So let's just start with uh, a simple rectangle. So press F4 and then really just start drag and dropping on the blank document to create a first shape. Now when you've done this, um, you get this little handles here, which can be used to resize the shape. And this one to uh, set the border radius in case of a rectangle. Um, so make a little rounded rectangle, but we won't focus on that now. Um, then when you s press F1, you switch back to the default selection tool and you get this different set of handles, um, which can be used to uh, resize the object in any direction you want. and you can also move the object, of course. And when you when you press um, one more time on the already selected object, you get another different set of handles. This time uh, they can be used to rotate the object or to skew it. So really just the basic transformations. Now I press uh, Control C to undo the changes I've made. So another property of my little shape is the color and the color can be changed with this little color picker here. Um, if you haven't got this dialog fill and stroke here, um, you can open it up by, by clicking object fill and stroke here. And here you really can select any color you want in this color picker um, and also set the transparency of this 
object. So let's stick with the green rectangle. Um, then another cool feature um, is to press Control D, which duplicates the currently selected object. So when you drag the object, you get two of those green rectangles. Um, and this is a very useful feature, which we'll really extensively use in the future. And if we want to combine these objects again together, or rather group these objects together, uh, we can use Control and G. And that way we can do transformations on the whole group, like rotation and movement and all these things. If we want to ungroup it again, we press um, right click and go to ungroup. Now one more thing I want to show you is um, besides color, we can also set a gradient for our objects, which we'll also use very often uh, with our graphic style. And this creates a linear gradient or a radial gradient. And now by cr um, clicking F2 or F7, we'll get these uh, gradient handles. And these are really the color points of the gradient. So by clicking on one of those handles, we can select the color of this point and that way we can really um, set some nice gradients. Um, this by default has uh, alpha value of zero, so we have to switch it over to a full opacity and now we really get some nice gradient effects that way. As I've told you, uh, of course, web the graphics are infinitely resizable, so we can also make use of the zooming function in Inkscape um, by holding control and then rotating a mouse wheel, we can adjust the zoom vector um, and so if we zoom in a little bit we can already see vector graphics are in fact infinitely resizable you don't lose quality of your graphics um, and you can do the resizing in both directions of course there are limits in the program because it is a software and it has to be there has to be limits it can't be infinite but theoretically you could um, zoom in and out infinitely uh, so yeah, you can really make use of the whole space here just as you like. It doesn't matter now. Yeah, these are really the basics, um, all the basics we need so far. And I would say we just start creating our first game character. I want to start with a little guy, so mostly his head probably. And I really want to be only using only the tools that I've shown you the past minutes. Mm, so really leave out all the complicated stuff there is and just create a very simple character so let's delete this stuff and start with his head um just press f5 and draw a circle or ellipsis and we have to set some kind of skin tone now and after that we want to start maybe with the eyes so we really want a perfect circle now um, this you can hold control draw a perfect circle or also a, a perfect square in the case of the rectangle tool um, so by holding control you do this and then we change the color to uh, completely white and move it over here and now we'll duplicate this object and make it a little darker maybe now make the pupil a little in the direction of uh, blue. We press control to preserve the constraints. Um, and also by, by adding shift, we can make sure that it's resized with origin in the center. And this way it's it stays perfectly aligned. And do this another time to create a little more shade. And move this a little down here. And let's move the whole thing down. I've now um, pressed shift to select multiple objects and move them together. And inside this thing, we'll add another uh, ellipsis and make this white. Now, <laughs> so I know I've promised you that we'll only be using those free tools, but now this tool is very simple and, and very handy. Uh, it's basically a color pipette. So um, F7 to use this tool, color picker and you can select any color in the image and use it for the currently selected object. We'll select this object and, and create another layer outside of it. Um, 
again by holding shift and control you can do this and now we select a little lighter tone of our skin and now another functionality um, reordering of objects so the, the layering of objects um, we can uh, use the keys um, page up and down to move to change the ordering of objects so by pressing page up we can move it one layer up and pressing page down one layer down and we can also use um, the, the home key to move it to the very foreground or the end key to move it to the very back let's make this a little bit darker actually and and let's add a little a little highlight um rectangle tool white and a little bit transparent this makes a little shiny look to the to the eye now let's move the inner eye a little bit to the bottom and let's make this a little bit bigger okay now um, we'll make use of the grouping which i've shown you earlier select a whole bunch of circles and the one rectangle and press ctrl g to make a group out of this and now we can resize the whole group together um, move it together and duplicate it of course as a whole so in order to make the second eye we just create a duplicate of this by pressing ctrl d and moving this to the right now another shortcut to flip objects horizontally uh, which can be done by just pressing the h key and um, although we don't need it now the counterpart to this to flip it vertically pressing the v key so um, double click uh, inside an object to um, re to select it inside a group and make this a little bit more transparent because otherwise it doesn't look that good okay now we have our eyes we have our head which is a bit too wide i think um maybe the eyes are too big but i don't know yet yeah they are too big okay let's maybe let's um continue with eyebrows yeah let's use basic rectangles for this and use some brown color for that and rotate it a little bit duplicate rotate or flip horizontally and some different rotation here let's add the mouth next let's make kind of a white ellipsis let's make it rather white and now uh, on top of that let's do another ellipsis with um, the color of the skin um, overlapping the previous ellipsis and this way me maybe we can achieve a kind of a, a mouth like shape let's stick with that um <laughs> it's not it's not great but it's really <laughs> it's really not easy to create a mouth with only uh circles so yeah um the nose is a little bit easier actually uh let's again create a little darker skin tone now and then on top of that place another circle with the original skin tone and then by readjusting this a little bit we can achieve some kind of nose all right now let's continue with the ears also very easy to do a big circle on top a small circle beneath <laughs> and you've got an ear and duplicate or first group maybe and duplicate and flip horizontally up next a let's create a neck a rectangle and now we make use of the gradient first a linear gradient then f2 and um, moving the gradient handles to play to make a, a vertical gradient out of this and on top we'll use a little darker skin tone and on the bottom we'll use um, our regular skin tone yep and then move this to the back um let's give him a little bit more of a an upper body let's make use of uh, another thing 
uh, from the ellipsis tool. With the ellipsis tool, we can u make use of that handle, which um, creates like a, a circle segment. Um, in this case, we can create a, a half circle. A half circle. We cr uh, press V to vertically flip it and resize it. We don't want him to be naked, so let's recolor this a little bit. Yeah, maybe blue. Um, and to make it a look a little better, um, let's create a circle here, or again a half circle maybe with the color of this very yeah of the skin tone actually, and adjust that a little bit to. Well, I think that's good enough for now. So we don't want him to be bald. Uh, hair can be really tricky with only circles. Well, it would be possible, but let's rather give him a, a little hat. That's cool. Uh, use our ellipses for that. Um, by pressing this button here, we can make sure it's a whole circle again, a whole ellipsis. And then we'll recolor this to make it a little dark brown, a little darker. Um, another ellipsis on top of that. Okay, um, a little shading maybe to get some details. And now let's group this thing and place it on top of his head. Maybe resize it a little bit. Well, the <laughs> it's a little bit too big. Let's. It's not perfect, but. <laughs> Let's stick with this now. It's starting to look like uh, our a little guy. Um, let's add some details. Uh, first of all, a little bit of shading uh, or lighting. Um, a little highlight here on top of the head, maybe. And when doing lighting, we can really make use of the of the transparency. So a little lighter and a little transparent, and then place it a little below these things. We could even use um, make use of the gradient tool actually to get a more seamless, um, shiny highlight here. Maybe some details, some maybe some freckles here. We can make use of the gradient tool as well to get some some of these. One, two, three. Little variation in size, and another portion here. Well, again, some variation to m get a little bit of more organic look. And these little details then really make up your graphics uh, with this simplistic style. Another detail down here, maybe. And last but not least, this was a little bit too small. So here we have it, our little character that is made entirely out of very simple rectangles and ellipses. And the really cool thing about vector graphics now is that with just a few mouse clicks you can get another completely different and unique character. So with that in mind I hope you have fun playing around with Inkscape and I look forward to uh, the next episode when we will take a look at some more advanced features and we'll start building a little more advanced and detailed human character.